Yeah, my Warm your butt on. cheeks up. Warm up your butt cheeks. When I say Chris Pratt, you probably have a pretty clear idea of who to think of in your head. He essentially plays himself in every role he's been in. Will you poop on me? What? Which is the lovable goofball who can also typically kick some serious butt. On the flip side, there's a guy like Crispin Glover, who more than likely gives off a villain vibe and would rarely be considered for a triumphant hero role. Throughout Hollywood, there are countless examples of actors like this, who, for whatever reason, are typecast as either a hero or a villain. But there's a small, unique category of individuals who can famously pull off both. Those mega-talented stars who can pull off memorable roles deserve some extra distinction. Perhaps the greatest and most noteworthy one of them all is none other than Batman himself, Michael Keaton. I'm Batman. He was originally known as a comedic actor prior to being cast as Tim Burton's Caped Crusader. He played the role with a certain level of quirkiness, now you wanna get nuts? which makes sense considering he had just famously played the role of Beetlejuice. Hey, hey, hey! Excuse me? What? Keaton's Batman is widely considered one of the best renditions of the role. Namely, it was the character's conviction that despite all its troubles and blemishes, Gotham was a city worth saving. Keaton played the role as a deeply complex, confused character who was more Batman than he was Bruce Wayne. If anything, Bruce Wayne was the one in disguise. He's dark and troubled and emotionally wounded, but still managed to sprinkle on a healthy heaping of heroism and likability. The whole thing came off excellently, and for a long, long time, Michael Keaton was the gold standard of Batman. By that logic, he wouldn't really be able to sell himself as a villain in another superhero franchise, right? He's so beloved by legions of fans as a hero, it's almost impossible to imagine him pulling off a 180 and suddenly delivering a memorable bad guy performance. Well, if that's the way you think, then you certainly haven't seen Spider-Man Homecoming. I'll kill you and everybody you love. In the film, Keaton delivers another iconic performance, only this time as the antagonist of the movie, The Vulture. He approaches the role with the same level of complexity that made his Batman character so endearing. Good old Spider-Man. He isn't a villain because he's evil, he's a villain out of necessity. The moral ambiguity made for an extremely likable villain. He was relatable and his motives were borderline understandable. In another context, he could have been framed as a Robin Hood type, you know, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. Only, he also kind of beats up on the rich while he's at it. Hey, I didn't say he was perfect. Speaking of Batman characters, Liam Neeson is another guy who can pull off both sides of the coin. In Batman Begins, he was the shady Ra's al Ghul, who notoriously turns out to be the main antagonist of the movie. Originally thought to be Bruce Wayne's mentor and friend, it's later revealed that he's a villain with aspirations of destroying Gotham. Neeson perfectly sells the deception, going from close ally to dreaded foe in a heartbeat. His cool and calm demeanor played as the perfect contrast to Christian Bale's often stoic Batman character. I'm Batman. However, Perhaps Liam Neeson's most memorable role is as a vengeful super dad in the Taken franchise. I will find you, and I will kill you. It isn't your typical superhero movie, but Neeson's performance as Brian Mills was certainly heroic. Taken was so successful that they even made a second one, where he and his wife get kidnapped this time. Then they made a third one, where I'm honestly not sure, but I'm sure someone else gets kidnapped and Liam Neeson saves the day. I haven't seen the movie or, or looked it up, but I can pretty much guarantee that that's what happens. Speaking of older gentlemen pulling off action roles, how about the leader of the Avengers, Nick Fury himself, Samuel L. Jackson? For a guy who typically just plays himself, fully stocked with his standard curse-filled vocabulary, I'm this it's fascinating how easily he's able to pull off a good guy and a bad guy. What's really interesting, though, is for a guy notorious for intense roles, his best heroic performance and his best villainous one are some pretty tame ones in comparison. As Nick Fury, he's the stern and powerful head coach of the Avengers dynasty. He's the hero that all the heroes look up to. On the flip side, as Mr. Glass in Unbreakable, he pulls off a brilliant mix between fragile and maniacal. 
It's impressive how easily Jackson is able to jump between just and morally strong leader type roles into a bitter and devious villain who shouldn't be trusted. Sticking with the MCU, there's another actor who shows off his ability to go good and bad. I'm talking about Michael B. Jordan, whose Eric Killmonger character was perhaps the most endearing villain to ever grace the big screen. They knew death was better than bondage. While he absolutely hits a grand slam as the bad guy in the Black Panther, the very same guy is notoriously Adonis Creed, Apollo Creed's son, and the heir to the Rocky franchise. Despite their moral compass having somewhat of a disparity, the two characters actually aren't that far off from one another. They both boast immense confidence, willpower, and perseverance. They're both underdogs who overcome obstacles to reach their goals and fight for what they truly believe they have to. The challenge for the mantles of King and Black Panther. Both men also live in the shadows of their deceased fathers, which fuels their intense commitment to their goals. They're both attempting to rise from their past to claim a spot that they believe is theirs, sometimes fueled and sometimes blinded by their fear of failure. Killmonger's actions may have been questionable, but they're a little more understandable when you're privy to his backstory and his motivations for doing said things. He's a complex character with clear emotional baggage that he expresses in the wrong way. As Creed, he openly deals with the ideas of toxic masculinity, daunting expectations, and mental health issues. Despite one being a hero and one being a villain, they're both equally relatable and likable roles that Michael B. pulls off to perfection. Then there's Idris Elba, who also takes part in the MCU as the lovable good guy Hemdal. You may know him as the guy who manages the space portal on Asgard. Here we go! You know, that big rainbow bridge through outer space that shoots people all across the galaxy? Yeah, he's kind of like the carny that operates that ride. But not just anyone could fill that role. He plays a righteous and noble character who takes his responsibility seriously. So seriously that, spoiler alert, he loses his life defending his post. Which makes it all the more interesting that the Fast and the Furious franchise decided to go with Elba, a universally beloved figure, as the villain in their recent Hobbs and Shaw release. Who the hell are you? Bad guy. Not only is Idris Elba so popular, but isn't a bad guy supposed to be bigger and scarier than the underdog hero who eventually overcomes the odds and pulls out the victory? How are they going to frame Idris Elba as the favorite against Dwayne The Rock Johnson? That just doesn't make any sense. Of course The Rock is going to win. It's The Rock. He always wins. Or how about Sir Ian McKellen? Talk about your iconic roles. This guy is Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. You shall not pass! He's always knowledgeable and morally unbendable, sticking to his convictions with a strong will. He also approaches a villain role with the same type of demeanor, especially as Magneto in the X-Men franchise. He's just one of those guys with a powerful on-screen presence, whether he's playing a good guy or a bad guy. This club of actors pulling off iconic roles on both sides of the spectrum isn't unique only to men either. There are plenty of females who have pulled off memorable performances on opposing sides. Perhaps the most notable one is Angelina Jolie, who played such an imposingly powerful Wicked Witch in 2014's Maleficent. Well, well. She brought a layer of elegance and grace to the role, which at its core was as evil and vindictive as they come. However, Jolie was also able to bring her same level of intensity to the role of Lara Croft in the Tomb Raider movie. She proved that she could pull off the action and the stunts just as easily as the deathly looks and glares. Finally, there's one actor who comes to mind when thinking of going from hero to villain. For years, Denzel Washington was considered one of Hollywood's top leading men. He played a train mechanic in Unstoppable, an ex-assassin in The Equalizer, and even a civil rights activist in Malcolm X. The list of his iconic roles goes on and on and on, but he could never quite nab that coveted Academy Award as the hero of a movie. All it took was for Denzel to show his bad side, as he did in 2002's Training Day, for him to truly flaunt his acting chops successfully enough to grab the greatest prize in Hollywood. He had to grow an evil goatee and become the worst corrupt cop you've ever seen in order to take that leap. He played the role of Alonzo Harris in such a bitter, violent, and corrupt manner that audiences quickly forgot all the lovable roles that Washington had been known for prior. He made the switch, and it paid off. What do you think? 
Is there an actor notorious for playing a hero and a villain who we forgot to mention? Let us know in the comments section down below. We love to hear from you. Before you go, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed to Screen Rant because you don't want to miss all the great new content we've got coming your way.